a barrel. Let's go to Pete McGuire at XM.com live in our Sydney CBD studio, chief executive, no less. Pete, welcome into the new week. Uh, your perspective now on, I suppose, the dollar's move and that support for crude prices. What's been, I suppose, coming together to, to bring about the stability? Well, good afternoon, Carson. A couple of things you need to consider. We've seen that strong push up. But more importantly, as the US dollar's weakened, we've also seen net long positions for the hedge funds piling into a, 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 a nearly to the point of a frenzy. We haven't seen this sort of, um, uh, in the sense of nine to one, bullish positions versus short positions. And it's getting back to the ISIS days of 2014. These numbers aren't traditional. It's a crowded trade. Uh, it's going to be interesting when they want to exit. So uh, I'm looking forward to some fun and games over the next couple of months. And the trigger point for such an exit would be what? What has to happen, say, to the greenback? I think, first off, mm. you might see some softening there. As, you know, mm. Are we going to see, um, as, from Trump's uh, push through and where the Fed sees itself, Carson, if we don't see rate rises by mid-year, then I think you're going to see downward pressure as far as the US dollar, mm. possibly you know, that May-June sort of number. Uh, we're going to see a stronger Aussie, of course. But the other side, I think gold's going to edge up fairly, probably 1250 to 1280. And where does crude grow? I think you'll probably see a softness on that one. Even though it's more affordable? Well, yeah, I think so. The reasoning is I'm mm. concerned where Trump plays Iran. I think that's going to be, it's only the early stages of it. We're not talking nuclear, but certainly those ballistic missiles, where that interplays, what goes on over the next, say, six to eight weeks. We understand the cuts of from a compliance side, as we've discussed week on week. So I think that, you know, leading into, if we don't see geopolitical concerns, it may, you know, hover around this number. But if uh, Trump gets involved, he's going to increase rig count tremendously across the states. Uh, that's very evident with um, Mark Todd will tell us the number shortly, Baker Hughes. So I think it's going to be very, very crowded. Mate, the they've got 729, Whoa. so they've rallied seven, 17 over the last week. Um, I think one of the themes to think about with the US is that uh, they have taken uh, what Donald Trump has said at face value and, and gone. They've you know, rallied. And, uh, and I think if, you are in, in, if you're in mining, if you're mining oil, you'll be going there saying, he's on our side. This man is going to support everything we do and you'll be driving uh, fuel fuel into the system. So Doesn't this just take up the slack from OPEC's cuts, you know, two months yeah, ago, so three yeah, months ago? It's all keystone, it's everything. So the, the OPEC cuts, he'll say, you know, make America first. Exactly right, and I think that that's so evident yeah. and we'll probably see that push up by Easter. So I think it's going to be a fantastic three to four months of trading opportunities for, you know, the retail investor. Have a look what's happening as far as gold positions as well. The hedge funds have crawled right in bed with that one and they've really pushed it a lot higher. Very, very bullish on that trade as well. So that's playing, of course, into the crude market. Why, why are you not getting the drawdown? Expectations tomorrow that stockpiles will have been climbing for the fifth week. Why aren't we getting early moves to deplete that? in anticipation of everything we've just talked about? Well, a couple of things. First off, um, we had such a huge build as far as tanker transportation going back in December. All of those big, big orders are coming to fruition now because they've got to be shipped from the Middle East and actually got to go to port. So uh, we're going to experience that over the next probably two or three weeks. It'll start to uh, level off a little bit. And of course, what's happening as far as those rig count, more production coming in online in the state. So. I, I think um, we're going to see that push up as far as rig count and productivity, and that just seems to be the you know the mantra from Trump. Uh, Pete, it's Adam here, mate. Um, Met coal, sorry, changing the uh, topic a little bit. Met coal down 47% from November's high, and down about 26% year to date. Uh, where do you think this one's heading? Well, look, I haven't looked at a chart, but that's pretty. It's a fairly heavy washout. Uh, mm. No doubt that. We saw a great year. 2000, two, pardon me, Adam. 2016 was a standout as far as coal pricing, thermal, coke and coal. Uh, probably overcooked to the upside. Any market that has such a strong rally is going to take a breather. Mm. It's exhausted. Um, also take into consideration where we were last week as far as China and, you know, really the, it goes on holidays for that week and a half period. So it's not unusual to see washouts at this time of year. And you may see just a consolidation possibly a little bit further softening, but, uh, you know, 17 should be a good year for that whole energy sector.
Peter, you're thinking, uh, you mentioned goal a couple of times and the breakout at 1250. Is there a, a risk off strategy around, um, let's call it the execution risk on President Trump? In other words, he, he writes a lot of uh, mandates and he'll put up a lot of executive orders and then find out the legislative pathway to, to create a legitimate change mm. becomes harder. Does that create a risk off volatility and then people start to pile into gold and say, look, let's try and push this a little bit higher because it is the safe haven? Well, that's what I think the hedge funds are exactly doing, Mark. They've interpreted that information. They've seen the, the concerns. They're, they're domicile US, so they're living and breathing this. And it's such a great unknown. You know, we spoke about, you know, it's a tweet by tweet proposition. Where do we go? You know, what's going to be released over the next week? Think about this. Over the last couple of weeks, he certainly, just give you a quick list who he's upset. Germany. Uh, you'd have to think where he is as far as Mexico. North Korea, Iran. The, the seven nations that are in that Muslim pack, uh, probably upset to some extent Canada and then other South American countries. So, Well, what about Japan as well? Uh, Japan, of course, Japan. So he's having a pretty good run at the moment. Uh, he's only been in power a couple of weeks and let's see I think they who he can align uh, himself with. Hashtag scattergun. I think one of the other things to think about, Pete, is that the hedge fund guys now have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning because that's when he starts tweeting. Well, that's so if you right. Want to trade it'd be a big it, day. Oh, he's a workaholic. It. We know he works seven days a week. Mm. So I think that where the market's going to go, I, we, we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, Carsten. You mm. said to me, where do you, what's the best trade? Mm. And I said, I think gold's going to be it. At this sort of, and it's proven right, and I, mm. I don't need any accolades for mm. it, but, you know, we looked at it, we thought about it and, con and considered that movement. I think that where you're looking at the moment, Carsten, 1250, 1260, 1270 over the February time frame. Yeah. You could see higher if you see some um, uh, unknowns being presented from uh, the president. I mean, it's intriguing. Yeah, go I'm not sure if you can get the chart up, but right. if you can get the chart up, what Pete's talking about since December, the rally in gold is absolutely, you know, like the V-shape is quite phenomenal. Comex, bring I, it up. I don't, know how, right. um, I don't know how much is going through in terms of the trading, but Pete, that chart is phenomenal. There's one. Yes, it is, Mark. I, I mean, mean well, there you December. go from where you see that standpoint. View, that's... that's that, that base is in December. He, the man gets elected in November and then he starts tweeting and then people start saying, OK, uh, I'm buying that. Now, I don't know, is that, is that a sense of that is the hedge fund, but would it also be the Asian component where people are saying, you know, what do I buy? Treasuries, do I move out of treasuries, go into gold? Is there something else happening as well, Pete? Well, I think so. Second point is, um, you know, you've seen that very strong equity rally. I think there's a lot of nervousness out there. The hedgies have piled into uh, certainly the crude market and to the uh, precious side of it. And I, there's just a high degree of uncertainty as far as rate rises in 17. The numbers that we saw on Friday weren't great. Uh, sure, non-farm payrolls, but as far as wage growth has been pathetic. So that's the, that's the issue at hand. When do we see a rate rise? And if every month goes on, Mark, that you don't see some traction from the Fed, Yellen, Stanley, Fisher and so on, then it's going to be a handbrake and gold's going to gallop away. And uh, there's every chance you could see a 1300 handle within the next few months. I wouldn't be surprised. Have a look at the chart. It tells everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Sugar is running out of... Uh, Sweetness, Carson. Exactly, it is. It's turning bitter in their mouth. Uh, all care of... Well, Sweet poison. Well, I mean, all care of Brazil, the Brazilians, right? Yeah, been a fantastic uh, crop. Uh, you yeah. know, we had a deficit, global deficit, and thinking about, you know, 7.2 billion people on the planet, sugar is a highly consumed across all cultures and all countries. Yeah. And Telling us softly, mm. carry on. Yeah. And uh, at 24 cents we saw in um, October, Mm. And it came down to around about that 20, 21 cents. We feel as though that, you know, there's not much, there's no further upside to it because huge crop, it's just a standout, you know, a crop of a century. So that's going to impact the price, probably see a little bit of softness and you may see sub 20. Just demonstrates, mm. you know, that large volatility swings that are ever present in the agricultural sector, dealing with Mother Nature, of course. Mm -hmm. Soybean, any thoughts on that? Remember how... Um... The, just when the Trump became the president, or just prior to it, uh, yeah. the numbers of soybean going into China was a phenomenal amount. I can't remember the numbers; it's billions. Yeah. And and soybean has been steadily going higher. In January, I'm just looking at the chart. In January, a low of just under a thousand bucks. It looks like were, everyone was piling into this. Yeah. Um, what's happening on that front? 
Well, they're not from an ethanol side. You're not going to see, uh, you know, as far as crops being turned into ethanol, these sort of prices with rig count increasing and oversupply, I don't think there's going to be any chance you're going to see an alternative. Unless, you know, uh, we're not talking Teslas, we're talking, you know, biofuels and so on. As far as crop production and you've got animal feed, um, human consumption, it's a, it's a, you know, a number one story. You know, again, all of those mouths, people coming up the consumption curve from certainly rice-based all the way through to high-protein meals and soybean fits that category very clearly. So uh, it's, it's not unusual this time of year and the price has just been a fantastic trade. I think it'll probably continue a little bit to the upside. And Pete, don't forget my soy coffee. So, you know, make sure oh, that as well. Soy yep. coffee? Please go, go on, it's a modern coffee. When, anyway, you've got to talk to Pete. I was going to say goat's milk powder and honey. Well, I'm uh, an espresso some... fan. I'm not <laughs> suggesting, you know, I, I, I like those. I don't want to, you know, uh, put milk in it and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be an espresso a... that, at that point, would it? No. No, it would not at all. Unadulterated uh, till the cows come home. Thank you so much, Pete, XM.com Chief Executive, Pete McGuire, live in our Sydney CPD studio. Let's...